Hi guys, uh, it's Anae from Ancient Gallery. Welcome back to Drawing and Discovering Dinosaurs. Today we are going to be drawing our L dinosaur, which is Lambiosaurus. And um, today we're going to draw it a slightly bit differently, but uh, don't worry, it's going to be much easier than before. So let's get started. So, Lambiosaurus um, was a, a group of, it's from a group of dinosaurs that we have not r really looked at before. Um, not that much, um, called the hadrosaurs, and those are the famed duck bells. And while they don't, they kind of look like a duck's bell, uh, they really don't that much, but they kind of do. Anyway, um, Lambiosaurus was a hadrosaur. Uh, there were a family of iguanodons, uh, kind of like, um, the ornithopods. So, yeah, they were herbivorous, and they were very large. Um, the hatrosaurs could both walk on two legs and four legs. So, um, that, uh, on Wikipedia, it says that apparently that's called a facultative biped, but mostly they preferred to um, walk on four legs. So Lambiosaurus um, lived in North America in the late Cretaceous period, and it was very common. Also, uh, it had a lot of relatives, like um, the better known Corythosaurus, um, also a Hypercrosaurus, and a dinosaur called Aurora Titan. So Lambiosaurus would have been like a, probably a favorite prey of T-Rex, uh, compared because compared to like say, Triceratops or um, Pachycephalosaurus, uh, hadrosaurs are not that, like, um, hard to attack. Because they don't have a lot of means of defense. Uh, all they can really do is run and hope that whatever is attacking them is slower than they are. Also, a lot of hadrosaurs had these, like, um, kind of cool crests, and Lambiosaurus had this really cool crest. It kind of shaped like a hatchet blade with, like, a sort of, a, quote, handle jutting out backwards. So, yeah, that's um, pretty much what a Lambiosaurus is. So... So, um, paleontologists are not really sure what the crests were actually used for. There are a lot of theories. Um, some theories are that it was used to identify members of the same species. Others are, um, one theory is that it was used for mating calls or perhaps to alert other nearby animals of predators coming. Um, people don't know. Back in the day, some people used to think that um, these crests were kind of like snorkels to help the animal breathe underwater, but now we know that that is definitely not true. So, um, hatrosaurs were pretty widespread all across North America and um, a bit into Asia. So they would, they would have been like the most common prey for Tyrannosaurs, uh, partly because there were a lot of them, secondly because, as mentioned earlier, they are very easy to attack. So we're going to just color this dinosaur in. Hadrosaurs probably lived in big herds, um, unlike Ceratopsians, uh, who were generally a bit more, um, not, not like, uh, as closely group social as, um, other dinosaurs. So, yeah, one thing to keep in mind. So, and, uh, living in a herd was, uh, like, 
the best de defense they had because you had to have a lot of eyes and ears on the lookout. Lambisaurus literally means a Lambie's lizard. So um, it was discovered by this guy called uh, Joseph Lambie in like the 1800s and uh, it was named after him. That's pretty much all the info for Lamiosaurus, so we're just gonna like draw a tree over here right now. Alright, so I'm just gonna paint this tree green. Hadrosaurus like completely replaced uh, the sauropods in the northern hemisphere as like the main herbivores, uh, mainly due uh, to this tree. Not well, not the tree that we're painting, but uh, the kind of family that it belongs to because these trees were flowering plants and um, sauropods were not used to flowering plants. And so, and hadrosaurs probably evolved to eat flowering plants. So they completely outcompeted um, sauropods in places where like the um, flowering plants are more common than non-flowering plants. Alright, so... Alright. So, um... We're gonna color the ground in. At this time, like, there there wasn't a lot of grass um, during the heyday of the Hadrosaurus uh, and mostly Lambiosaurus, like, around um, 80 to, like, 65 million years ago. Um, that was when grass first started to evolve, mostly in, like, the southern, uh, the southern hemisphere and, like, places like India and um, basically the southern hemisphere mostly. There, there really wasn't a lot of grass, but uh, we still don't know. There could have, there, there was some grass probably. However, it was very um, sparse, and there weren't like huge prairies or grasslands like we see today. It, it was um, grass was literally endangered, though um, often endangered animals used to be more common back then. Um, before they were endangered. Um, grass was never common until after the dinosaurs. Uh, that was probably mostly because there really was, uh, most dinosaurs probably didn't eat grass. So, um, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna try to draw a tiny little fern here. It just gives you a scale of how big these animals actually are. Because, um, Lambiosaurus was pretty big. For, I mean, it was medium sized compared to, like, dinosaurs in general, but it was big for an animal. You could probably think of um, Lambiosaurus and Hadrosaurus in general as sort of like um, buffaloes or like bison. 
um, of the Cretaceous period, and like um, the Ceratopsians as more like um, big farm sheep or maybe like rhinos. And so that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, a pretty short video today, actually. Actually, wait, we, I completely forgot something. You have to shake the uh, um, dinosaur. Alright, um, goodbyes after shading. Alright, now we're going to shoot the tree. Alright, now we're going to shoot the furnace. Alright, now. Actually, we shade the ground too. Um, kind of like a like a shadow. All right, now, all right, now uh, we are coming to an end. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. Um, we'll see you in the next one with um, JKLM with our M dinosaur. So bye.